Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today in gaming, EA confirmed some big Battlefield Early Access news. Blizzard indefinitely delayed their two biggest games, Intel launched new monster CPUs, and much more. EA confirmed Battlefield 2042 will be available as a 10-hour trial for EA Play and Xbox Game Pass members starting on November 12th. The only other way to get access to the game is to purchase the Ultimate or Gold Edition of 2042 or sign up for the more expensive EA Play Pro subscription. And this is a big deal because it means that anyone with Xbox Game Pass can try 2042 on day one of early access. EA have done similar things with Battlefield 5 and Battlefield 1, but back then you were limited to playing with an EA subscription. Now that Game Pass is bundled with EA's subscription, way more players can get access at no additional cost. As for when you can start preloading 2042 and how much space you'll need for the game, PlayStation 5 users can start downloading the early access release on the 10th and they'll need around 50 gigabytes of free space. Preloading for full release on the 19th starts on the 17th. At launch, including early access, everything Battlefield 2042 offers will be available. That means Portal, All Out Warfare, and Hazard Zone will be live all at the same time. It's crazy knowing that we're getting a Battlefield game with three distinct multiplayer experiences all in one. Past titles have mostly offered a campaign and the core multiplayer with extra stuff like co-op or battle royales coming in after launch. 2042 is shaping up to be a much more complete package on day one. Whether or not it launches in a good state and players enjoy it is still up in the air. Now coming around to some EA related news, the publisher says that NFTs are an important part of the gaming industry's future. This echoes similar support of the emerging blockchain gaming tech scene from Ubisoft. They recently invested massively into a blockchain game company. EA is taking a more cautious approach and says it's too early to figure out how it'll all work, but you can expect future EA titles to offer play to earn mechanics that potentially reward you with NFTs or other blockchain related items. Blizzard have indefinitely delayed Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. For clarity, that doesn't mean that they're never coming out, it means that they've announced the delay and have not specified how long that delay will last. As for why they're delaying these highly anticipated titles, Activision Blizzard CEO pins it on staff departures, turnover, increased competition, new leadership in key creative roles, and more as key factors. One of the biggest departures is Blizzard co-CEO Jen O'Neill. She and another Blizzard executive, Mike Ibarra, were promoted to the position following Jay Allen Brack stepping down. O'Neill is staying on with Blizzard until the end of the year. In that time, she'll oversee a $1 million grant being awarded to the International Women's Game Association. O'Neill is taking on a role at that association next year. Now, of course, Kodak's statement regarding these key role turnovers doesn't directly mention California's workplace lawsuit. There's also no telling how many more high-level employees and executives could leave or be fired based on the results of the lawsuit. Blizzard are taking extra time to increase the size of the development teams working on Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2 to deliver more content and higher quality products at launch. Harassment concerns aside, it's probably a smart move to ensure what's essentially the next generation of Blizzard's titles launch in a good state with lots of content for players to enjoy. Until recently, Blizzard rarely released a game that wasn't a top tier release, but the Warcraft 3 Reforge launch was a disaster for the company. Likewise, their MOBA, Heroes of the Storm, launched with the promise of an esports scene, only for it to be put on life support and all competitive tournaments cancelled three years after launch in 2018. For Blizzard to maintain their status as one of the biggest names in gaming, it seems like Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 need to be home runs. AMD and Intel are going toe-to-toe -to -toe in tech reviews today thanks to Intel's brand new Core i9-12900K and the Core i5-12600K CPUs. Both CPUs offer compelling performance improvements over comparably priced AMD chips. Most reviews highlight a 10-15% to 15 gaming performance improvement with the i9 over the Ryzen 5950X. Likewise, the i5 offers an even more significant jump in performance over the Ryzen 5600 
1500X. The catch is that the i9 consumes an astronomical 240 watts with its maximum performance mode enabled. That's mostly limited to productivity workloads though, since games aren't usually heavily multi-threaded and won't draw the full 240 watts. The i5 is the real attraction with Intel's new CPUs since it's only $20 more than AMD's CPU and offers better performance while also supporting DDR5 RAM. And that's probably the most significant story through all of this new hardware. DDR5 provides a massive boost in clock speeds, capacity, and more. Intel being the first to market with a compatible CPU gives them a pretty meaningful edge. They're also the first mainstream CPU maker to release a desktop CPU with performance and efficiency cores aside from Apple with their M1 ARM processor. The ball is now in AMD's core to match or beat Intel. They have some exciting tech on the horizon like stacked chipset designs and DDR5 support, but so far we haven't gotten any real world data or specific product announcements. Early reviews and previews for Call of Duty Vanguard are all over the place. Some say it's a great refinement of Modern Warfare 2019's multiplayer, and others are highlighting the campaign. But some reviews have been quite negative. That's been the case with pretty much every recent Call of Duty title though, so who knows what the real story is. The good news is most reviews say that the beta was a poor representation of the final product, and key improvements to the audio, visuals, and weapon tuning have been made since then. Vanguard launches officially tomorrow. From Software released 20 minutes of Elden Ring gameplay, and saying it looks good would be a disservice. The game is being made partially in collaboration with Game of Thrones author George R.R. Martin. And while that means it's not a direct tie-in to From's Dark Souls game, it still looks like Dark Souls 4. And that's not a bad thing by any means. Elden Ring builds on all the mechanics and exploration past Dark Souls games have offered, while also taking cues from Sekiro's combat. There the result is a game that looks like a blend of Dark Souls, Breath of the Wild, and Skyrim. In other words, prepare to explore and die in style. The Halo Master Chief Collection is getting a 20th anniversary content update that adds a ton of retro Halo and Xbox themed cosmetics. There's literally an original Xbox backpack and a clippy nameplate. If you're a diehard fan of the franchise, this content drop probably offers a ton of exciting stuff. Indie mega publisher Devolver Digital is officially a publicly traded company. And while that probably doesn't mean a whole lot at face value, Sony are keen to get in on the offering. They're making a 5% investment in Devolver. Going public gives the company $50 million to reinvest in their expansion and over $200 million to give current investors and executives. Basically, the indie publisher known for a bird dating simulator and satirical E3 presentations made it to the big leagues. A shipment of NVIDIA GPUs has been confirmed stolen by EVGA. The company says thieves made off with a literal truckload of hardware but haven't specified exactly how much was stolen. EVGA are warning potential customers to keep an eye out for listings selling stolen GPUs. If you're unlucky enough to get one, their warranty will not apply to that GPU so you're out of luck if it breaks. Before we get to our final story today, I'd just like to say thanks for tuning in. Let us know what you think about those early Call of Duty Vanguard previews in the comments. Also, let us know what you think about Blizzard delaying Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4. New World just got a major update that fixes a handful of game-breaking exploits. Unfortunately, it sounds like the devs have a bigger problem on their hands. Players can apparently unban themselves from the game. You can either share the game with yourself via Steam's family share system or change the email registered to your Steam account. The devs are working on a fix, but there's no ETA as of yet. Players found a similar issue in the game's open beta back in July. And of all the exploits and issues with New World, this seems like it belongs at the top of the list for an immediate fix. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.